Propriona bacteria acnex is what we're going to talk about today and this is the natural bacteria all over your body specifically within the sebaceous gland for over a decade now I've been the girl on social media who's been telling you not to oil your scalp not to grease the scalp and that the only thing that belongs on the scalp is shampoo and today I'm going to break down that exact reason and that exact reason is propionum bacteria bacteria acne is one of the main bacteria on the human body. This bacteria lives within the sebaceous gland and anywhere that sebum is present. By the end of this video, you will know exactly why I am so against you greasing, oiling, and having wet hair for long periods of time and so many other team natural hacks. So let's get into this video. The name of this bacteria has been changed. so. As we are talking, you may hear me refer to it as a couple of different names. So now it is referred to as Cutium bacteria acne. So his main classification is still Propionum bacterium. But research still refers to it as P. acne, so that's what I'm going to refer to it as, as in this video because it's a longer name and I don't want to keep saying that. So P. acne is what we are going to refer to this bacteria as. P. Agnes is the main, one of the main bacteria that live within the human body. Now, not only does it live on the sebaceous gland and within the sebaceous gland and on the human scalp, scientists have shown that it also lives within your mouth and within some of your gut microbiome. So it is a natural bacteria that is a part of our body. When I'm doing this series on the different forms of bacteria and yeast and parasites that are within our body, it is not to scare you it is to show you that you are a city and because you are a city there are certain things that are required of you for the maintenance so let's hop into it p agnes is anaerobic which means it doesn't like oxygen now, normally the hair follicle is supposed to have healthy oxygen flow but the more this oxygen is limited the more this bacteria is able to grow and accumulate right we're gonna hop into a few more things, but I want you to remember that bacteria are living organisms. Now we're going over this bacteria is a little less scary than the parasite we went over yesterday. Yeah, even though that one didn't hurt you at all, it was just really, really scary. This one actually can do some damage and is one of the leading causes of the intense burning and itching and balding that you're experiencing. And let me explain. The parasite that we talked about in our last video, remember I told you it don't have no booty hole. So yeah, it can clog the, yeah, it has a whole lot of other things that it does. Make sure you go watch that video, but it explodes and that's what causes the inflammation but this bacteria p agnes what this one does it does have a booty hole right so it uses the bathroom it eats on your sebum it feeds on your sebum and after it feeds on the sebum it releases right it uses the bathroom and when it releases it releases different polypeptide chains right if you want to go deeper into that then i will but just in short it creates polypeptide chains and why is that important? Amino acids and things of that nature and cells are the things that are produced within your gut are the things that your body uses to produce healthy hair, right? Your hair is a protein. Well, amino acids create polypeptide chains. You know when I'm always talking about the hydrogen bond, the salt bond, and the disulfide bond, well, those are all a part of the polypeptide chain, polypeptide chain, I'm sorry, that makes the human hair hair shaft, the, the, the hydrogen bond, the salt bond, and the disulfide bond. And this polypeptide chain made a protein and that protein is the human hair shaft, right? So now that we understand what amino acids are and what polypeptide chains are and what protein is, understand that when this bacteria that lives within the hair's follicle, whenever it uses the bathroom, it releases different polypeptide chains and different amino acids and so many other things that's his doodle -doo, right and remember amino acids and polypeptide chains create proteins so when all of this is happening 
happening within the hair's follicle, you are going to have an eruption, right? This is when you have so many different things that don't belong going on within the hair's follicle. Now, remember, there is this bacteria also lives on the skin is one of, and is one of the leading causes for acne. It triggers inflammation, and inflammation is your body's way of fighting off things that are going wrong. For example, if you like hit your toe or your arm or something, it's going to become red, it's going to hurt, it's going to become swollen because that is your body's way of fighting whatever is going on. Whenever you injure yourself, your body will just be like, hey, I don't know what's going on, but it's something popping off and we don't like it. So we have to handle it and your body will start sending all of your red, all of the white blood cells and all of the other fighters within your body, triggering your immune system, releasing cortisol within the body, which does so many other things, your body just starts going off, right? And as a result, when that happens on your skin, you get a white head, right? You get a white head. But did you know that the same way that the follicle gets full on top of the skin, it also happens within the pore. So when this bacteria is able to overpopulate within the hair's follicle, it ends up creating a mess within the hair's follicle. This is when you see pus filled, all of the kind that I'll get will be like oh my god my scalp is red it's itching it's flaking and all of these different things that is because there is hell going on within the hair's follicle as a result of the over the overpopulation of this back of this bacteria now we need this bacteria but it is our job to make sure that this bacteria does not overgrow but by a lot of our practices and a lot of the routines and patterns that we follow it prevents us from keeping up and being in co-creation with our body so let's keep going now, it is a part of our normal skin flora like you need it and this P. Agnes is main role within your skin is helping the skin to fight off pathogens. The overgrowth of this bacteria leads to clogged hair follicles and when the hair follicles are clogged, right? The when the hair follicles are clogged, the oxygen flow is shut off and the bacteria is able to populate even more because it is their favorite environment. This will make seborrheic dermatitis even worse or it is something that will lead to seborrheic dermatitis because of the overabundance of bacteria within the hair's follicle. And I know what are their favorite environments? Number one is going to be any environment that has excessive, excessive sebum production. Like me, I am a person who has a really, really high sebum production and whenever I I, if I can't go longer than a week, honestly, more than five days without washing my hair, or it will almost feel like it's on fire, especially around, or it'll feel, or it'll feel, or it'll feel really funny, right? I'm not a person that can go a really long time without washing my hair because of my sebum production. And the longer I let sebum accumulate on my scalp, the more my scalp burns and the more issues I have. So washing my hair on a regular basis is always a must for me and it helps me to keep control over these bacteria because I know as we're going through these series you're going to want to know how do I get rid of them forever you cannot and you shouldn't want to because they all serve a really big purpose this is not just for this bacteria right that is on the human scalp any form of bacteria anywhere if you leave your clothes rags anything set out wet overnight we know it's going to smell funky in the morning and why is that we already know it's going to smell super funky in the morning and that is because when you have wet environments wet and damp environments are any form of bacteria yeast all of that is their favorite environment their absolute favorite environment so the more wet and damp your hair is the more bacteria growth you're going to have and i'm not 
talking about like oh if it's wet for a couple of days no like even for a couple of hours bacterial growth starts instantly poor hygiene and you not washing your hair and shampooing your hair on a regular basis can really 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 lead to inf serious inflammation and so many different follicle infections like folliculitis and this bacteria when when scientists <laughs> like myself study it when you study this bacteria this bacteria is linked to so many different hair follicle disorders because it is a part of the body's natural flora and if you're not shampooing your hair on a regular basis or if you're constantly feeding it its favorite food which is sebum and oils then you're gonna have a problem so this is where things get shaky because Remember, my intentions are not to change your mind or make you think anything different than what you already think. I'm giving you information. You can do it or whatever you want to do with it. I'm not telling you to stop greasing your scalp. Hell, you can go take a bath in it and eat it and, and put it in your ears and clean your ears out with it. I really don't care. I'm here to give you the information on this bacteria. Now, this bacteria's favorite food is oil. And so, you know how all of these different videos that you're seeing online, like, oh, this oil oil for hair growth and this oil because it has this vitamin and this nutrient and all of that remember bacteria is alive all of the different natural flora that you have on the human scalp is alive and all of the same vitamins and nutrients and all of the same things it does for you it also does for the living organisms that live on your body because it is just a fact of the matter that you are a city and you have hundreds thousands upon thousands millions Millions of different invisible microorganisms that are living on your body and using you as a source of food and if you allow these things to overgrow or if you're constantly feeding them allowing them to colonize this is what leads to all of the different forms of scalp inflammation we're, we're talking about greases and oils the same exact things that you are the same exact properties that these oils and butters have that you love the same thing they do for you that they also do for this bacteria that is living within the hair's follicle. Listen, why does this bacterium thrive in oil? Well, the reason that this bacterium thrives in oils is because it can metabolize the lipids within all of the oils, all of the butters that you put on your scalp. And if it's metabolizing these lipids, it means that it's sending it through its systems. The same way that you eat food and metabolize it, it goes through your digestive system and then you <clears throat> that's it so if you are a person who will notice that like after a certain amount of time your hair will stink funky stinky hair is not from what you think don't you know that if you any living organ in any living organism that puts things out it has put things in it has to go out this parasite we talked about it just blows up because it don't got no booty hole and it got to come out but this one that we're talking about right now this one goes to the bathroom so a lot of times that smell that funky smell that you smell in your scalp is not oh your scalp stinks because I don't know the oils and the butters or or your scalp doo-doo no it is the bacteria the natural bacteria that lives on your scalp it is metabolizing it is eating off of your natural sebum and the oils and the greases and the butters that you're putting on your hair is eating them metabolizing them pooping and farting them out that is the smell that you are smelling and that's not just for your scalp that is the bacterium all over your whole body i promise you go book an appointment with your dermatologist ask your dermatologist what i just said and they're gonna be like yeah this is why washing your hair on a regular basis is so needed but then we'll get people to say things like people try to argue with me about whether or not you should grease the scalp i get irritated because how do i say this in short this bacteria produces enzymes that can break down the fats within the oils and turn them into food. This capability means that this bacteria can literally use every form of grease, oil, bacteria, anything that you put on the scalp as food for it to eat and then metabolize and boo-boo out, like seriously. So that is why putting oil and grease on the scalp, it doesn't serve a purpose for your benefit. It 
only fuels, aids, and feeds the natural flora, the natural bacteria that is on your scalp. That bacteria is supposed to be there, right? But if you are feeding it and giving it more food, more chances to populate, then you are widely causing scalp inflammation. Not to mention, if you're greasing the scalp, if you're putting oils and butters on the scalp, you're creating a layer. And remember, I said this form of bacteria loves environments. They love, love, love low oxygen environments. So you greasing the scalp does not help the hair's follicle at all. It limits it and it creates a favorable environment for the bacteria. So you have wet hair from washing goes and not properly drying the hair because you're scared of blow dryers. And you have oils and grease on your scalp that has completely blocked, that has completely blocked any type of oxygen flow whatsoever or any form of escape for any of the doodle or anything that that bacteria is letting out because even if there's not an overgrowth of the bacteria right even if there's not an overgrowth right after let's say you do a scalp detox right you do a scalp detox and you remove all of the excess, the overgrowth of bacteria, at least all the parasites, whatever. You remove all of them for the scalp. And then after you get done, you go back and grease the scalp. You are literally just going back on top of it and giving all of the bacteria and yeast and everything that is on your scalp more food for it to metabolize and turn into food. That is what I'm trying to get everybody to understand is not as simplistic as oh I'm just putting this oil on my scalp everything works until it doesn't depending on what your diet is and what your everyday life is it could take a little longer right for you to see the results of it the younger you are the longer it'll take for you to see results in some cases but I'm also having a lot of clients who are having their little girls well I was having a lot of clients my books are closed now but having a lot of clients who had a lot of little girls that were just getting bald spots out of nowhere that is because by you constantly greasing the scalp and leaving your daughter's hair wet you are creating an amazing environment for these different forms of yeast and bacteria and today we're just talking about one of them so that's why it's so crazy right because now in the industry it's like oh we need more products for black girls more products for black girls why how come all of the professional products they don't have oils and they don't have butters and well the professional grade products baby they don't have a bunch of oils and butters in them because they understand all of the natural bacteria all of the natural flora all of the natural yeast and things of that nature and our shampoos are supposed to remove them not add them your shampoos don't need added oils because you're trying to remove them these are the things that I want you to understand and think about right when you look at professional products when you look on the label the thing that's grabbing your attention we're not trying to they're not trying to grab your attention with coconut oil with almond oil with this herb no even if some of them are making some of those products now that's not how they grab professionals that's how they grab people from the outside world but professionals we're not looking for that we're looking for words like hydration moisture uh, color protect bond builder reconstructor different things like that not we we're not looking for different oils and butters because oils and butters feed the natural floral that's on the in the body and on the scalp I need you to remember that your skin is the biggest organ on your body and your scalp is a part of that skin. It just has the most densest, fullest, longest hair, right? But it's still a part of your, your body. I know that on social media, it wants to, because most of the time, every video for every method or technique is, is, is a video idea created to pitch or sell a product, right? But there are literally three Three things only three things that you have to do to make sure that you control the natural floor on your scalp regular shampooing and conditioning avoiding oils creams butters grease and anything heavy on the scalp and lastly drying the hair properly and not leaving the hair wet for longer than 
it takes you to dry either under a dryer or with a blow dryer those three things will literally keep you keep that bacteria completely under control and I lied because there's one more so four things and the very last one is going to be your diet right I need you to remember remember amino acids create polypeptide chains and polypeptide chains create proteins within your gut microbiome so when we are when we are trying to grow healthy hair skin and nails when we're trying to treat our scalp with anything we want to start from the inside like what what food are we putting in our bodies right to make sure that we have enough amino acids the proper amino acids to turn into these polypeptide chains to create more healthier hair healthier skin prettier nails right these are the different things that we need to think about and last Lastly, this is something a lot of people are not gonna like, but I don't care, right? Anytime I talk about bacteria on the scalp, a lot of people are like, oh well, using tea and stuff. Listen, as an herbalist who has her own apothecary, right? The very last thing that I believe that anybody should do is put teas and things like that in their hair on a regular basis, especially if we're trying to cure bacteria, right? And this is why even when even before we get to teas even if we talk about antibiotics right for a lot of times sometimes depending on what type of dermatologist you go to right when if you have this they'll prescribe antibiotics because the antibiotics will go into your body they'll break down and from the inside they'll begin to kill all of the excess bacteria that's causing whatever the problem is whatever the new scalp disorder is that has been caused a lot of your seborrheic dermatitis is caused from an overgrowth of this bacteria as well right so when 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 your doctor is a lot of doctors will go ahead and just prescribe an antibiotic but even now a lot of doctors are starting to go back and retrace their steps because not that like oh it's horrible but as a doctor and as you as a scientist <laughs> you're studying you're learning and you learn you learn over the years which is why i got into herbalism that antibiotics although they're amazing in some cases they wipe all bacteria clean right and we do still need this bacteria this bacteria when in when in normal amounts when we're washing our hair properly when we're not overfeeding it right and causing an overgrowth of, bac of the bacteria by greasing the scalp and blocking the hair follicle creating a favorable environment for it to grow then what we end up doing is being able to limit the inflammation we can literally stop scalp inflammation stop balding stop the thinning and all of the different things the body's dealing with by just simply changing some of our patterns habits and routines even though it looks cute it looks fun oils and butters are not needed and see this is the thing a lot of women will go from never really washing their hair not having good patterns of washing their hair and you'll have an infestation right of the, the C acnes and all of the other different bacteria that we've talked about right you'll have an over infestation of these bacteria so then you go and you use clothes or you use some tea or you use rosemary tea on your hair and you're like oh my god rosemary healed me no it didn't it didn't heal you your patterns and your routines don't get mad your lack of patterns routines maintenance accountability and all of those things led to an overgrowth of these forms of yeast and bacteria then you put something like clove on it listen cloves are the destroyer i love me some cloves but they don't belong on your hair it will kill every living organism in its tracks do you hear me so the thing is it's not that clove grew your hair clove stopped the over infestation that you allowed to occur it just reversed it for you and now your hair growth cycle can move as normal but just imagine if you never did that to begin with 
I'm not t I'm not telling you guys to stop listening to, stop being subscribed to, or anything like that. Anybody that you follow. What I'm saying is, when you're watching something, take out a pen and paper, write down everything that they're saying, and research it for yourself. The same way you can research it for yourself. I purposely put keywords and all of the things that I'm saying on the screen and in my blog, so you can go and fact check me. And I promise you, when you go and look up this bacterial, you're gonna see that it's favorite environments are environments that have no oxygen all you're doing by greasing the scalp with something like blue magic or petroleum is blocking oxygen flow to the scalp that's all you're doing the bacteria that lives in the follicle loves it there and this is the thing i get this so much like so much in my comments especially on my lives i would have women uh like from seven eight years ago that were like see you don't know what you're talking about blah 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 I'm greasing my scalp. I'm fine. And then one day they wake up and they just slowly going bald a little bit at a time. It's like it all just start happening. That is because sometimes it takes a long, it takes a longer period of time for these forms of bacteria to accumulate within every follicle, especially if you were somebody who had really, really thick hair and you always wear it wet. So your hair is swollen. Our hair swells when it's wet. So it's lying to you. It looks so much thicker than it really is and then slowly but surely those slowly but surely like I told you how the follicle gets full the follicle gets full of bacteria because of this it gets full of waste from this bacteria and then it explodes the follicle literally explodes the same way you get pimples on your face is the same way you get pimples within the inside of the hair follicle it ruptures and when that constantly happens the inside of the hair follicle it creates scar tissue and after a while after that scar tissue within the follicle gets so thick the blood supply can no longer connect to any new hair strand to create any new follicles and this is where this is where follicle death happens because at that point the only really thing you can do is a follicle transplant why because your old follicle it doesn't work anymore it has too much scar tissue is so scarred there's a reason why so many people with curly hair are having to go in this direction you guys have been it's something that everybody wants to argue about but I don't care what anybody says the constant greasing and oiling of the scalp the constant uh, wetting and spraying of the hair the constant adding of gel because I need you to remember gel is made with water so anytime you add gel to your hair you're adding water to your hair Hair. adding gel to your hair and adding water same thing right so the more gel you add the more bacterial growth you have and it's just a repetitive cycle right so I want you guys to really really look into changing up some of your practices so that way you can find a way to change your change your habits and find a better way to maintain a healthy scalp floral one thing about this this, this bacteria that's crazy and I feel like the bacteria is getting stronger because you guys keep putting new products new oils new butters new routines right this bacteria creates a film i'll put the name of the film here but it creates a film over this noodle like because it looks like a little mini noodle this bacteria creates a film around itself making it like really really hard for different back for different uh medications that doctors give it to work right so there's so many of you like oh i've been going to a dermatologist and nothing's working it's like y'all the things that you guys do to your scalp are not normal. Greasing the scalp, oiling the scalp, buttering the scalp is not normal normal so for them to have different medications to be able to kill these forms of bacteria and these strands right it has to be something that's common enough for these doctors and these scientists to be doing work and studying these strands and it's only a very small part of the population that 
have let these this form of bacteria overgrow and like recoup this way right so this strain is progressing you guys because like I said it has a protective barrier over it that makes it really really hard for doctors to kill this strain with antibiotics so this is why it's so important for you to just not grease the scalp not put all of these oils and butters and all of these different forms of grease in the hair if you just have to put oils butters and grease in the hair you need to really really work on only going from mid shaft to ends right mid shaft would be like like right here to ends but i wouldn't i would avoid the scalp and to be honest I don't even want you to do that. It's so unnecessary. You have sebum coming from your scalp and as long as you comb your hair on a regular basis, you're good. These are things that I want you to think about and these are habits that I want you to start using for your little girls, right? I remember like we, there are certain grandmothers that have habits where their daughters have to brush their hair 50 times in the morning and 50 times at night. Like it's a repetitive thing we need to change the patterns but this is 